Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I'm joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall. What's up? And Michael Reed. Who is sitting here sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. Please make sure that you try their new ghost pepper donut, which is a surprisingly <laughs> spicy and sweet treat for those who enjoy all things that are savory and sweet. I if you don't mind money. the heat, please try the new Dunkin' ghost pepper donut. <laughs> this is not a paid for ad. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the Burgundy Zone. We are going to recap the 23-20 to loss to the New York Giants. We're going to get everyone's reactions from that. And then we're going to talk about the team overall. Where do we see them being at right now and looking towards the future? What are they going to do? Do they still fight for this division or do they kind of sit on this season trying to get a draft position? Then we have some fan questions that we're going to go over. And at the end of the episode, we'll have our overall NFL reactions, our surprises of the weekends, and whatever have you. But that being said... Let's start this off with Michael Hall. You were not here for our post-game reaction pod. Kyle Allen got injured in that game. For some reason, November games at here in FedEx, whenever the Washington football team plays on the similar yard line, Kyle Allen gets dislocates his ankle pretty bad, is requiring surgery, so he's out for the year. Alex Smith steps in. Michael Hall, what's your reaction to that game? Uh, Definitely hope – Sorry, first off, let me say speedy recovery to Kyle Allen because that looked like a real gruesome injury. Uh, by all accounts, he's going to bounce back four-month recovery, and he, uh, I guess he'll be back next year in 2021 ready to go. With that being said, uh, that first half of the game was definitely disappointing, starting from the first play of the Washington like scrimmage for offense, <laughs> I would say, with the fumble and then the whole like crazy blooper reel with no one be able to like fall on the football. Mm-hmm. I said in our group chat, uh, I was like, it still blows my mind to this day when I see a loose ball on the ground and people just smack it around and can't jump on it. Like, you're grown men. I've been jumping on a football since like Pee Wee. Like, you can't right. jump. You can't jump on a football. It's like, don't blows, my, it blows my mind. Right. And the, the awkward Logan Thomas, like it looked like he just tore his ACL while trying to bend over to like pick the football up. It looked like he was scared to touch it because he thought yeah. he might have stepped out of bounds or something. Yeah, it was like crazy. I don't know. But uh, with that being said, the first half was like really disappointing. That I felt like. That was going to be one of those games where we came out and kind of showed, like, hey, we're here to kind of compete for the NFC East, even though obviously it's all, like, a really, really, really down here for the whole East. Just go out and show, like, hey, we're going to come down to Week 17 versus Philly. It's going to be us and them coming in for the uh, title for the division. I guess technically you, we still can. Right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, second half, definitely uh, I like what Alex Smith did a little bit. Uh he still can't really escape the rush like right. I like I want well like he wants to probably also but uh yeah I, he definitely did some great things through for the most yards he has as a Washington football player uh Terry McLaurin like we should be talking about him <laughs> as like a, a top 12 receiver in his league I mean the dude is just a beast dude I think he should be in the MVP discussion dog he's he's putting up crazy numbers with yeah with mediocre at best quarterback play to say right. the least that's being nice like yeah. he's doing like deandre hopkins type things like right, right. not not as bad quarterbacks but he's doing deandre hopkins right. type things uh yeah overall i mean like i said i'm mad that we didn't really take control and like kind of show the rest of the nfc east like like i said it's it's, it's us or philly right uh i guess technically going forward we still have a shot but like i said in the last pod if we don't win this game, I don't even want to talk about playoffs anymore. So I'm out on the playoffs. But overall, I just want to see the rest of the season. I want to see them fight hard like they have been in the second half. And hopefully Alex Smith or Dwayne will be coming down the stretch. Yeah, and I, I made a comment to a couple people, and my father-in-law in particular, I sent him the little like video soundbite of the replacement scene when <clears throat> Gene Hackman asked the players about fear and what do you fear. And you know, they make crack jokes, and Keanu yeah. Reeves says quicksand. And he describes how one bad thing happens and then another and then another. And then you're fighting as hard as you can. And before you know it, you're in over your head. And that's how that first half was going. I felt it just seemed like everyone had butterfingers. No, they couldn't. Every time something good happened for the Washington football team, something bad followed it. Like the big run that they were able to get into the red zone. And then the Morgan Moses uh, illegal hands to the face pushes them back uh, 10 yards. You know, it was just that kind of game. But I will say, 
I was incredibly impressed with how they played that second half. They yeah. really fought back. And the one thing was, is I know everyone's talking about the check down Charlie aspect from Alex Smith, but the one re the one thing I took away from that, it was in rhythm. The offense was moving, intriculating down the field against a pretty good Giants defense, in my opinion. Right. And they, they were went down the field easily in that second half. I was impressed because they had no business being in that football game. Zero. Mm -hmm. With how right. they played in the first half, they had no reason to be that close, and they still had a chance to win it. Th that's my opinion. That's Yeah, exactly. like we talked about on Sunday, that's kind of my biggest takeaway. Is the first half was probably the worst first half of football I have ever seen this team play, and uh, that is oh. saying something. I'm not, no, I don't agree up with you there. This was, I don't this agree was, with you. This was close to the Monday Night Massacre no, or Jim Zorn <laughs> it was. It was bad. That first half was bad. It was like, that it was level. Really bad. It, I was, it was there. up there. I was there for the Monday Night Massacre. Uh, right. I was I, because look, I'm my family were big Virginia Tech fans. So Michael Vick coming back to FedEx Field, face off against the Washington Redskins. We had a uh, lower bowl seats right sitting there, right where the Philadelphia Eagles started the football game. And I'll right never forget yep. that play action. Vic puts it behind his back, sits there, and then just chucks it to Deshaun Jackson. That was that was the beginning <laughs> of the end. And I'm telling you, I had that same feeling in this game in that first half. Yeah. Right. It was, it was, that's what I'm saying. It was bad. I don't think it was necessarily as bad, but it was no. up there. I mean, it was definitely up there, but uh, it was just one thing after the other. It's like that, that first play from scrimmage was a good play. It was a great like play. It was, it was a great play by Gibson. It was just almost like bad timing. Somebody's coming up behind him. He sees he has the ball in the correct hand. Like I believe it was, uh, who, it was a ball. Trevor Murdoch said it, it was kind of just like a perfect, perfect storm right there. Where Blake it was, Martinez. He was, but he was going to cover the ball, and then he didn't realize that a defender was behind him, and the helmet, he tried to defend it. The dude came up from behind him and punched it, and it just popped out, and then nobody could touch it for 20 yards. Now, I but, will uh, say, <laughs> in defense of Logan Thomas, I know everyone's piling on Logan, but I could, like, literally, as I saw him running out of bounds. I was the, like, don't touch the ball. That's immediately what I right. thought, and that's what I yeah. think he his mind, because remember, he, like, toe-tapped. Yeah. So he was like, I oh. think he he, he was, thought that he stepped out of bounds and he was like, there's okay. I'm not touching this. Right. Ball yet. And that's why I thought that like, it kind of threw him out of whack. But right. the crazy thing is I thought, I think Freddie or Tay and Todd said this on Twitter and they're absolutely right. Smack that ball out of bounds. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Exactly. Smack right. it out of bounds. Like, right. Why are you trying to pick it up and run with it? Why are you trying to fall on it? Just smack. Yeah. You're on the sideline anyway. At that yeah. point, it's positive yardage. He fumbled <laughs> right. it forward. Just hit it out of bounds, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then going forward to the second half, though, that's what really impressed me. This team really came together. First of all, I thought that the defense, everybody's given the defense a, a lot of a lot of crap, and, and they deserve it. I mean, the, all, the, the Giants are not that good on offense, mm -hmm. but – our defense did come up with some opportunities for our offense in the first half and our offense kind of either Jarius Wright fumbled it away or what have you. It was just bad all around second half. That was completely different. Second mm -hmm. half. That's they held them the at three points in the second right half. there. Mm -hmm. Alex Smith had two bad passes that entire half. They both just so happened to be intercepted. Uh, the first interception to McKissick McKissick fell down after, as Alex Smith was releasing the ball that happens. You can't really put that one on him. The next one, I understand he was trying to make a play, just kind of threw it over McKissick's head, who tapped it up into the air, and then it got picked. But then the last one, uh, which, by the way, Redskins postgame, did you guys know Jason Campbell's on there? I haven't watched it in, like, four yeah. years. I yeah, did not I know that. I no. didn't, yeah, and, and I watched it. Jason Campbell's on there, and he looks completely different, and it was weird. But uh, <laughs> he was explaining it, how, how he, there's a dig. or that looked like Sammy Sosa. There's a crossing route. Yeah. yeah, there's a crossing <laughs> route. Yeah, nobody looks that different. There's a, a crossing <laughs> route or something, and then there's supposed to be a dig coming up behind it, and it was just a miscommunication between him and whoever, and Logan Ryan just kind of baited him into it and picked it off, which heads up like Logan Ryan's a fantastic defender. But, yeah, it, it was the tale of two halves, and the fact that we were still – it came down to one play despite us have being plus five in the turnovers, right. I think are, is a little bit crazy to me, and that's – Incredible that we were still in the game. Yeah, and look, this was a bend but don't break defense the entire game. I know that. Look, we can. They are guilty of being gashed through the running game and liquidating clock and time management without a doubt. I won't sit here and say otherwise. But they did their end of the bargain. They stopped the Giants. They did when enough. The Giants got into field goal position multiple right. times, and this defense forced them out of it. I yeah. thought they played incredibly well, and they played winning football in that second half. But unfortunately, the offense with the Gibson fumble and the right fumble, it kind of just threw them for a, a little bit of a whack, you know, threw them awry. And then Kyle Allen being injured, I, I predicted this game to be 30-6. to six, And I'm going to be honest with you, the way that second half played out, 
That it should have. That should have been the end result. Technically, yeah, yeah. it should have been like forty to six with the way that the second half yeah. went. The we, Giants what would we do? outscored them twenty to three. The Giants did not win this football game. No, I no we lost go, this football. We game. lost it in the 100%. first half easily. Yeah. We lost it on the first two possessions. Right. If you want, if you want to be yeah. frank, yeah, those There's first two possessions, the first quarter, yeah. we lost it. That Antonio Gibson fumble kind of like slowed the momentum down. Right. Defense comes out. I think they gave up a field goal or was it a touchdown? Field goal. Field goal. Yeah, they gave up a field goal. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Come out again. Defense holds them. Get the ball back. Right fumbles the ball. From that point on, it was kind of just like I felt like it wasn't really like the same old kind of like, oh, here we go again kind of feeling for the team. But like you said, it was kind of like the quicksand thing where it's kind of like, they're trying to do their best to get out their own way. And it's just literally they're just fighting more and more, sinking more right. and more. But again, like you said, that second half, uh, I said it in our, our uh, group text. I was like, man, you saw Morgan Moses on the sideline before they were even went yeah. into the locker room. Right. Yeah. I was like, man, Ron and Mother Morgan about to dig up in their ass mm-hmm. during halftime. And whatever they said worked. It's just that uh, – Came up a little bit too short. A little bit too short. I feel like – I think it was Grant Paulson was saying that he was actually at the game. And he said that from his angle and his view – Terry McLaurin was actually open on that throw, but – and Alex Smith said it after the after the game also. He said that when you're throwing over the middle, this is quarterback one-on-one. You never you throw it high. You can't, you can't, cl- you right. can't clutch. you got to just make the decision and go with it. And he said he kind of clutched it, kind of second-guessed it for half a second, yeah. and then tried to hit McLaurin. Right. That's when Logan Ryan stepped in front of him. McLaurin was actually open on that dig. Yeah. So it's just uh, – I think that yeah. it's Riddle Alex Smith kind of being – yeah, Alex rusty. Smith kind of still being rusty. Yeah. Him kind of like not getting the full work with the starters all week because with Kyle Allen was a starter, obviously. So I think that coming into this week, him preparing as a starter all week, he'll get that prep time. He'll get the the uh, the coordination with the receivers and the tight ends in the passing game. He won't make those kind of mistakes again. Right. And, and but moving forward, you do got to feel comfortable with somebody like Alex Smith back there. I mean, of course, assuming he doesn't get hurt or anything, you know, heaven forbid. Our offensive line's been playing a lot better and. Alex Smith is a veteran. He's a very good player. He, I know he hasn't played in two years, but look, he flashed. He made some pretty big plays. And I know everybody wants to talk about the checkdowns. That's always been his game. And he made the checkdowns when he was supposed to make the checkdowns. He made the throws downfield when he was supposed to make the throws downfield. That touchdown to Terry, his first touchdown in two years was such a feel good moment. And Terry made such a, such a good play on that ball huh. that it's just incredible. Like Terry McLaurin is so underrated. Everybody right. wants to talk about 50, 50 balls. Terry seems to always come down with these balls that should be like 75, 25 yeah. in favor of the defense. Yet Terry somehow manages to pull it off and make a big play. It's, it's almost crazy. like it's Deshaun Jackson esque, you know, because right. the one the one thing about Deshaun that everyone kind of underrated about him was his contested catches. And now Same he with could, Steve Smith, right? yeah, they could go downfield and go get the ball, and that is what Terry McLaurin is doing. And he's dude, there's nobody out there that can point and say Terry McLaurin is not doing everything in his power. To win the try to win that right. football game, and he yeah, is yeah. without a doubt doing it. Now, I want to ask a question before we get into the game beers and our possible blanket party if we have one, because I think we can do both for this football game. As much as we shouldn't give them any credit, I do believe game beers is deserved for a couple guys. I want to ask you guys a question. Now, I've talked with Andy of the uh, the um, DC Tweet Team podcast, and we were messaging back and forth. And the question that he had, the the turnovers, you know, early in these games, getting them down by multiple scores, is that a coaching issue where they're not stressing the turnovers during the coaching and practicing, or is that on the players for that game? I'll start with you all. Uh, Look, people always go back to the the coaches aren't coaching and the coaches aren't coaching it. Look, these dudes are NFL players. If they still need to be coached to hold on to the football, then they probably shouldn't be in the NFL, in my opinion. Should they be actually stressing ball security and stuff like that in practice and, and like in walkthroughs and meetings? Obviously, yes. But again, if you made it this far in your career and you're an NFL player, obviously the first thing in your mind when you have the football in your in your in your possession is hold on to the ball, two hands on the ball. But that being said, I'll go like 70-30. Like it's definitely like a player thing as far as like 70% of it. Because again, like I said, you've been doing this since Pee Wee football for the most part, most guys. And You've taught you've been taught since peewee football. Hold it with two hands, hold it high and tight. Uh point of the football, like out here, stuff like that. So I mean, yeah, cradle the football. So yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go. It's more of a player thing than a coaching thing, but obviously the coaches need to instill ball security and that type of things more and more in practice because they're doing a lot of turnovers in the uh, first half. 
Yeah, look, I, I believe that that is a player thing. And there is a reason why Morgan Moses was screaming at the players right before halftime. He wasn't screaming at the coaching staff because the penalties, the turnovers, the mistakes was on them. The coach is not on the field telling you to uh, make sure, like, don't fall start here. That doesn't happen. You have to be able to be that <laughs> assumed smart. Assumed every play you know right. you're not going to fall Exa start. Exactly. <laughs> and so, like, that, my whole point was this is a very young team. And I've said this multiple times. You have to learn how to lose before you learn how to win. And what this team is realizing is that the way that they played that first half is how you lose games. And how they played in the second half is how you win games. Now, going forward, knowing that they can play like that, this is how they say, okay, now we have to do it for four quarters. Let's play that way for four quarters. Get into that rhythm. I feel like this is a building block. I, I, I really don't believe that it is a coaching issue because every coach is going to tell you ball security is job security, right? And right. this is a young team that just has mental mistakes. It's going to happen. There's growing pains, everybody. And this is one of those aspects. They're it going to get through it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, people got to remember, this is a young team. This is a team that wasn't expected to do much just in terms of talent, you know, at some key positions, like they're still very young. They're quite frankly, some of the, just some people just aren't very good. I, I mean, obviously Antonio Gibson is, and I think that that fumble is more just a, a crazy set of circumstances right. than anything else. Cause Antonio Gibson hasn't fumbled this year. I don't believe yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, and then the Alex Smith turnovers, obviously that sucks. He's going to he, That's not going to happen to, often with Alex Smith, uh, you, you know that. Um, and then the Jarius Wright one was just, it was one of those things where it was a mistake. It, it, it happens. I mean, you got to look the ball in when you're catching the punt. It's a player issue. If they know that, like Hall and you said, Kyle, coaches coach, players play. They made it this far. They know that they have to, what to do to stay on the field. They know what they got to do to get playing time. They know that they can't turn the ball over. Nobody wants to turn the ball over. Nobody wants to commit a penalty. And every once in a while you have a mental lapse and that type of stuff happens. That's on the players, and the coaches can only do so much about it. Yeah, now, now right. let's move on to this next question. Do you guys believe that Scott Turner is abandoning the run? Like, do you believe – Like, what do you think about the running game? Do you think that he should have had uh, more of an emphasis on running the football on Sunday against the Giants? I'll start with you, Hall. Uh, definitely a little bit more in the second half, I think. Once they were starting to creep back into that game, I think they should have kind of got back a little bit more into the run. I know the defense wasn't really doing them as many favors by letting the Giants eat a lot of clock up, not really getting off the field on third downs when they should have, just stupid offsides penalties here and there, kind of just killing themselves like we've been talking about. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, nine rushes total for a game is, like, unacceptable. I know you're down in the first half by a lot. You kind of got to throw your, your way back into it. But like I said, once you kind of worked your way back into that game, you definitely should have relied on – McKissick, uh, Antonio Gibson should have got more touches. I think, what, did he have like five touches the whole game or something like that? Mm. So, yeah, you definitely got to get Gibson more involved in the run game, especially coming off of a game against Dallas where you saw when he had 20-plus touches, he killed it. I know Dallas' defense is like a complete 180 mm. from the Giants, but but that being said, every offense of game plan starts with the run. You got to rely on the run to open up everything else. So I definitely think that uh, – in this circumstance, he did definitely shy away from it, but I fully expected him to get back to it against Detroit because they're one of the worst rushing defenses in the league. Yeah, I think that this was purely just a circumstance because, look, this is the same thing that happened in previous weeks when the football team gets down early, and I know it's a loss. Everyone says, oh, they abandoned the run. Well, the circumstance made them do that. And I felt like with Alex Smith is what they were realizing is that short yardage check down when they needed to get downfield fast, that was working as a running game. I will without a doubt tell you they need to stay with the run because the one thing against Dallas that we saw, Antonio Gibson did not get the ball that much in the first half against Dallas. Remember, he was used as the bruiser in the second half, and that's when he started eating alive mm. that Dallas defense. And so when they don't have the ability to run the football consistently in the first half when it's even score and they're put in obvious passing situations, Antonio Gibson does not have the same effect on the defense in the second half. And obviously, they couldn't run the ball a lot in the second half. Do they? Should they still consistently run the football more? Without a doubt. And I would love for the game to be more even based so they, they have the ability to run the football, but the team keeps making mistakes that force them in these situations. I don't think Scott Turner's abandoning the run, but he should have more emphasis on it. What about you, Reed? Yeah, I feel exactly the same. I feel things maybe would have shaken out a little bit different in the second half. We would have had more, but I mean, that it, it 
that type of stuff happens when you're down by multiple score scores in an important game against a division opponent. You're going to try to get the chunk plays. You're going to try to do whatever you can to get back into the game. So I, I get it to an extent. But yes, throughout the season, I, I do think that he's kind of tried to get a little bit too fancy and maybe abandon the run a, a little bit early. Um, I know Jay Gruden would abandon the run all the time. You'd get down by a field goal or a touchdown. All of a sudden, <laughs> Jay would stop running the ball except right. for on first down. Um, and <laughs> so true. Uh, <laughs> so true. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, coming out like it's just isn't it crazy though like how much of a 180 it is from jay gruden to this staff right. like jay gruden would never make adjustments whatsoever right. and, and this team comes out in the second half all the time and plays way better than they did in the first right. half yeah. jay gruden would start throwing the ball early it's just i don't know it's just nuts but uh yeah no i, I think that they definitely need to use they need what they need to do is use Anto Antonio Gibson a little bit more as a traditional running back. Uh, I did see that he has one touch on third down all season. He's only been on the field for 10 plays on third down. McKissick now is having a career year. I, I don't want to take anything away from him. He deserves to be on the field, but maybe do some packages with Gibson on the field with McKissick or whatever you want to do. Um, they have but, been doing that more and more. Yeah, yeah, but apparently he's only been on the field 10. I'm just talking about on third downs. Um, the one, yeah, only, I got you. Good. That one been, Cam he's Sims. on the field 10 times on third down. That one Cam Sims uh, play on the sideline, that long pass. Yes. Uh, J.D. McKissick was in motion. Antonio Gibson was lined up in the backfield. So you're absolutely right. They need to right. use that formation yeah. a lot more because obviously it's catching the it defense works. sleeping. Yeah, they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. That Cam Sims, man. How about him? Cam uh, Sims had a So yeah. that being said, let's transition okay. perfectly. Right. Let's get into <laughs> game beers. Reed, I'll let you start because you're already on one. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with Cam Sims. Uh, he, yeah, finally, he finally had his game that everybody has been expecting from him for the last, what has it been, four years now? Mm -hmm. Three, four years? Maybe even five? I don't know. Uh, it hasn't been five years. But, uh, he Felt like good, five years. Sh yeah, shout out to him. He's got all the ability that you want. He's big. He's tall. He's physical. He's fantastic in the run. He's stuck with this team because he is a player who's going to go out there and do it all. He's a tradition. He's just a football player. And I really hope that he uh, kind of seizes this opportunity and realizes that he can play in this league and that he can be, he can contribute as a wide receiver because he would be a perfect option right there across from Terry going forward. Yeah. Three catches for 110 yards, uh, 36 uh, average, four targets, only, only had one not completed just absolutely barn burn he is killing it my one of my honorable, uh, honorable mentions tim settle getting a big time sack in that yeah. game obviously we've talked about with matt ionitis leaving that that revolver changing of the bullets or were they going to show up obviously tim settle did i thought that he deserved some credit because he played a good game yeah uh, i'm gonna go with another demons alignment i'll go with big my man deron Payne. i think that a lot of people have been kind of not really sleeping or faking, but they really haven't been talking about the season that Deron Payne's been having so far. Mm. He's been pushing the interior. He's been getting pressure. He's been he's been crucial in the run game of this season. And I know whenever Matt and I and I just went down, everyone said, "Oh, we lost our best interior rusher. We best our we, won, we lost our best pretty much alignment overall." Blah 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 blah. But look, I think Deron Payne took that as an insult and has been having a pretty uh, career season so far. So he definitely gets in my game beer. Yeah, and I, sorry, go, go read. Uh, I don't want to take yours. I, go ahead. You go first, and then I'll go. Uh, I was going to say Morgan Moses uh, because right. him riling the troops up there, I needed that needed to happen. You know, when that when that game was going down, I'm sitting here like you know, wanting to pull my hair out, and that game's going on. Like somebody needs to wake these guys up, and I'm glad that Morgan wasn't just sitting by and waiting for halftime to start yelling at people. He's you no know, God. This is ridiculous, and he was Show dropping some. some in heart yeah Man. and i absolutely love that and some pride i thought morgan moses played well um, i mean i love that the one penalty he had was the illegal hands to the face which he was disputing I, I didn't get to see the replay but without a doubt morgan moses solidifying himself as an outspoken leader he gets that honor he gets a game beer for me yeah um obviously the guy up here he played fantastic but yeah I, so I'm not even going to go with he him. He gets a game beer every week. He, yeah. Yeah, you are, you are, <laughs> he gets the game champagne. He gets and a bottle of champagne. Don't even get a beer. Another person who seems to be doing something every week, even though Give him the brewery. show up in the stat <laughs> sheet, is Chase Young. Chase yeah. Young affected this game, whether people want to admit it or not. You saw, everybody saw that where yeah. he got triple teamed. Uh, he still he, he got a sack. He had a tackle. Uh, he, he just affects the game. He almost had Daniel Jones on that one play inside, I believe in, in the red zone, mm -hmm. Daniel Jones just got away, just rushed forward, still caused a sack. Uh, it was because of him. Uh, Does Chase he Young lead, is just, he affecting. leads the league in pressures, right? Uh, he leads, league he leads, in rookies. I know he oh. leads all rookies. Yeah, yeah. with 17. Um, 
he, the sacks will come with Chase Young. People got to relax. He's still he's affecting the game mightily. You, th- this dude is just incredible, and it's amazing for for you to see a rookie to get triple teamed already. <laughs> like that's that's saying something. Now I haven't really seen that since Prime Von Miller. Like you don't see that right. very often. So I was gonna say it's kind of hard to get a sack when you're getting triple teamed and right. double chipped right. and all this other crazy stuff. But yeah, you're exactly right. Look, the dude is affecting the game without all this the crazy like big flash plays and stats to go with it. He's getting the one-on-ones for guys like Deron Payne to have career years, guys like Jonathan Allen to have career years, guys like Montez Sweat to have a breakout year. So, look, the dude's going to be a beast for the next 10-plus years for us. So, we're good. We'll get it. He'll get the sacks eventually. Yeah, and you were going straight to my point, Hall. I would be legitimately worried if Chase Young was not getting pressures and nobody else was getting sacks. They had five sacks on the day against Daniel Jones. I'm not going to sit here and cry about it. They obviously, they could have gotten more pressure on Daniel Jones in that first half. But look, they still got the job done, and a lot of credit is because of Chase Young getting double and triple teamed all season long, without a doubt. One of my other game beers, Cornelius Lucas. Stepping yes. in at left tackle, Jaron Christian is still injured. He's not healthy yet. He has was rated the highest tackle in the NFL last week. Lots of credit to Cornelius, uh, yeah. Cornelius Lucas. That's Go drink some straight, beer, brother. That's two straight cut games from Cornelius Lucas, both of his look, starts. So And look, that's someone that all the beat reporters was just like, he was God awful when they saw him in practice and stuff like that. So for him to come out and step in and have two great weeks back to back, no, we hold a look. You can say what you want about Dallas defense as a whole. Yes, they're horrible, but they still got some players on that defense. Oh, yeah. And you can Especially say the same pressures. thing. Exactly. You say the same thing about the Giants. They got guys like Leonard Williams, uh, Marcus Golden, there he got injured. Now he got traded. But yeah, they got guys like Leonard Williams and then Blake Martinez coming off the edge in the blitz. And Dexter stuff like that, Lawrence. So. Dexter Lawrence, exactly. So they still got some guys over there for him to have the highest grade as a uh, left tackle or a, a lineman in the league. And, so okay. and, and it, it's really showed too the last two weeks. I, I didn't even really realize it until after the game, after I read that. But yeah, every time a quarterback has dropped back, it's not constant pressure on him. Like it, yeah. quarterbacks have actually had time to throw the football mm-hmm. and it's been true for the last two weeks. So Hopefully that trend continues. This offensive line is playing a lot better. Yeah, and I will say, uh, before the season, we talked about the left tackle position and how it was going to shape out. Um, I personally believed before the season that Jaron Christian was going to start, but I could see Cornelius Lucas sneaking in somewhere once he gets more familiar with the team because he was on a different team last season. He was with the Bears. So coming over, I thought he could at some point, and I'm glad that he's playing well. And I hope that they do stick with the hot hand um, until Jaron Christian is 100% healthy because I think Jaron Christian is a good backup to have, regardless yeah. of, the, of the position that you're in. If he's coming in, he's going to do well. And then the last game beer for me, and that's it, and then we'll get in the blanket party, Cam Curl. Um, I know that he gave up the touchdown uh, to Evan Ingram, but he was trying to jam him at the line of scrimmage, got beat. It happens. Got to stop that from happening, but he made up for it later on in the game with a huge sack to yes. be able to force uh, the punt so the Washington football team and, could have a chance to win the football game. And you know what? If that's any other team other than the Washington football team, Daniel Jones fumbles that football. I mean, if it's, any, if it's all the time. If it's any other day, like a quicksand type day, like Kyle was right. talking about, he fumbles that ball. We probably yeah. scoop it and score, to be honest with you. Yeah, but, but nope, not one of those days. Us, so. One of those days. And my last game beer will go to, obviously we talked about him earlier. Uh, I guess they put Gibson in the doghouse after that fumble because he didn't see the field a lot after that. J.D. McKissick, he's having a career year right now. He had, a, what, like, I don't even know how many catches he had, but he had damn near, like, at least five to ten catches minimum. Uh, and then the rushing game, he was kind of doing his thing, even though they only ran the ball nine times. But, yeah, definitely as a receiver, he was out there doing his thing. And, yeah, hopefully he keeps it up. And he has a revenge game against the Lions coming up. So, hopefully uh, – him and Alex Smith can get a lot more acquainted. Now, the blanket party, I don't have a long list here, um, but one of them is going to be surprising to you guys. So I'll start this off with somebody that does deserve the blanket party, which is the beating in the middle of the night, um, and that is Chase Royer. Um, there was a couple of uh, replays that I saw where he just was not giving great effort. I'm not sure if he's injured right now, whatever have you. He is not playing incredibly well as of right now. I thought he played putrid in that game, so I think Chase Royer deserves the blanket party. I will go with only because it seems like the coaching staff gave him an in-game blanket party. I'll go with Gibson. They got that fumble in the beginning you of the game. You love picking that boy, man. I know, man. That's my guy, man. I gotta be, well, look, when I give him praise, I got to give him praise. I got to be hard on him as well when I, he has a bad game. Hey, more power. And he had a, yeah, he has his first game of the season or first fumble of the season. 
And yeah, like again, hopefully with Detroit coming up this week, they're the 31st, I want to say, uh, rush defense in the league. So hopefully this will be a huge game for Gibson to bounce back and get a game beer from yours truly. Yeah, yeah for uh, my blanket party, it, it's going to be a little bit tough, but I, I'm just going to go with something as a whole. Our run defense, just in general, just take all those guys just for it. Just give them each one whack with a pillowcase full of bars of soap just in the middle of the night, just because you can't let Wayne Gallman and Alfred Morris run like that on you, at least uh, unless it's 2012 Alfred Morris, and <laughs> right. I would understand. But you, you got to stop the run against the Giants. They did, now they did a great job against the pass, but like Jack Del Rio, I'm sorry, like Ron Rivera has always said, you play the run on the way to the pass. So you got you got to stop, still stop the run, just despite the always wanted to play the passer. So yeah, absolutely. Now let's move Beat on. Em. Let's move on to our fan questions, and we'll start with uh, Mr. B, the good old father-in-law. He had a couple questions that he wanted to hear us discuss. So Hall, I'll go to you first. He has a couple here, but the first one being. Will Dwayne take this opportunity seriously now that Kyle Allen is out for the season and Ron Rivera has said Dwayne is now the backup and he's having a more front uh, I guess, front row seat to actually seeing what Alex Smith does as quarterback? Do you think Dwayne will take it seriously? Well, if you uh, listen or follow Darren Haynes, of course, he will take it seriously. But no, nah, but uh, I think that – uh, Yeah, of course, he already has been apparently. But no, nah, I think that uh, – It'll be in his best interest, I'll say that, to start taking it more seriously. Hopefully he's buckled down. Hopefully, I'm not going to say learn his lesson, but hopefully he learned a valuable lesson and everything's not going to be given to you just because you're a first-round pick. You're not going to be entitled to be the starter. Just because you're Dan Snyder's guy, this is not going to be a repeat of the RG3 era. Like, no, you got to earn your spot on the team. And hopefully, look, I think that, so that's hard to say because I feel like they're going to stick with Alex Smith to try to stay in the NFC East race. But I think if it goes south, if they, if they don't, if they lose to Detroit and then lose to the Cincinnati, I think Dwayne will be in after the Thanksgiving game against Dallas. So this is a short week. They'll give him like a lot more time to prepare going into a long week. So I think that the last quarter of the season, we could see Dwayne Haskins, but mm. I expect Alex Smith to come out and have a pretty good game against uh, Dallas against Detroit. And Cincinnati's a throw up in the air. But, yeah, I think that uh, the last quarter of the season, the last four games, I think that he'll be out there. And hopefully he'll take it serious and he'll show on the field so we can get some value back for that trade asset. Uh, Colonel, I'll tell you right now, he better take it seriously. Um, I, I've said this for a while. This is not a football thing. What Ron Rivera is trying to do with Dwayne Haskins, it is a life thing. He's trying to teach him a lesson. And in life – Life hits you hard, and life is not fair. Something my dad would always tell me. Life isn't fair, Kyle. Doesn't care about your feelings. You got to work hard, brother, and that's what they're expecting of you, and they're watching you closely. I really hope he takes it seriously. So, yes, I do believe he is. So, do you know how when, when you're going to walk across a frozen pond and you take a step on it and, and it, there's a little crack and you're just like, I better not walk across that. That's Alex Smith's leg right now. So, Dwayne better be taking it seriously because <laughs> that thing could snap at any minute. You never know. He's coming off of a very serious injury. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens. It, it, you're one hit away. You're always one play away. He better be taking it seriously, especially after getting embarrassed the way that he just did with all this off-season hype, all this Instagram videos, all this look at how much weight I've lost. I, I'm named a captain. I'm the starter going forward. And then you get benched after four games. You better be taking yourself. You better be taking this seriously, and you better right. have been using the time that you have been third string and not dressing every week to study your ass off and work your ass off and work your way back into good graces. Cause even if it's not here, like you said, Hall, it could be with another team. This could be your NFL career could be on the line right here. Who wants to pick up a guy who's just gives up on his team because he got benched for not playing well, you right. know? So he better, he better take this seriously. And so, I hope he yeah. does. Let's keep it with you, Reed. Now the second part to Mr. B, uh, Mr. B's question, what do we do from here as a football team uh, going against the Detroit Lions, looking at the, the season, do we look at this with an optimistic point of view that we want to win games, or are we trying to lose as many as possible for draft capital? Um, I, I, obviously, I, the coaches and the players want to win. They they want to do whatever they can to win. There's this in this division, you can you can win this division easily. Still, uh, as sad as that is, um, and you know that that's what they're going for. That's why you play the game to win. You don't go out there to play just to be like, oh well, next year we can we can get some draft right. picks. Uh, now, as a fan, do you want to see them win? I think that that would be awesome because it ruins my week every time that they don't win. Uh, but of course, at the same time, I wouldn't be too mad with a higher pick because this is a pretty good quarterback class. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It really just depends on how you feel. If you've already given up on the season, yeah, of course you want them to lose. But uh, 
Me personally, I would like to see them continue to win because I think regardless, even if they come close to winning the division but still lose, they'll still have a decent draft pick. So we'll, I just want them to win and, and so people can stop saying that Ron Rivera did the wrong thing and, and that they should be tanking this year. There's no tanking under a coach like Ron Rivera. Yeah. Look, I'll tell you right now, I believe that they should still continue to try to win football games and every and all of their power. Because this team is literally very close, four and f- away from being four and four. Five turnovers is the difference between them being four and four. They could very easily be at the top of the NFC East and actually look really good. But the two Giants losses is what really brings them down, and they should not have lost those games because they're a young team with bad mistakes. They got to keep fighting because I think this is a good football team that's starting to find out their identity. Unfortunately, they keep having to change quarterbacks, which is kind of slowing Mm -hmm. the process down. So, but I do believe that they still need to fight for football games. Hall? Look, man, how do you learn from your mistakes? You got to get out there and keep repetition. Get out there. You got to keep playing. You got to keep playing. And all these people that are saying, oh, we need to just tank. We need to lose the rest of these games, blah, blah, blah. Haven't we been losing enough games for the past 15 to 20 years? Right. Haven't we seen enough teams in the past 15 to 20 years where they don't put out any effort? They're just all about like, oh, just put it in for next year, mail it in for next year. Oh, we're going to go this, do this in the draft, blah, blah, blah. I'm tired of that, man. This is a new era. This is a new, seriously, this is a new era. This is a new coaching staff. This is a new everything, dog. Like, I want to be an actual winning culture. I don't want to be the laughing stock of the NFC anymore. Holes and my that's spirit start- animal. Exactly. Yeah. And that starts with, not being a tank team that starts with holding yourself accountable like Ron Rivera. That starts with a coach like Ron Rivera. So with that, with that being said, even even, like I said, everyone wants Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence. We're not going to get a number two. We're not going to get number one overall pick. Right. So get that out of your mind right now. If we're going to get any type of quarterback in the draft, it might be Trey Lance with a top, maybe seven to 10 pick. And and, that's, and that's, and that's a maybe exactly. People should be gunning for guys like Kyle Trask in the second or third round. Zach Wilson, maybe with a top 10 pick, maybe even Mac Jones from Alabama in the second yeah. or third round and building the look. I was actually just talking to Dan Long, this dude who used to work at GB Shades. He was texting me earlier. He was like, give me five scenarios. And I was just like, look, this defense is like not, the defense is kind of straight right now. I'd rather come in with like a Jameis Winston type quarterback, one of these veteran quarterbacks in the off season or stick with Kyle Allen for the first couple of games build around this offense as far as like top tier playmakers in the first two rounds, even three rounds, like the gems of Terry McLaurin's and Antonio Gibson's, and then maybe find a quarterback to kind of sit, watch Kyle Allen and learn how to learn the offense, blase, blase, and then hit the ground running. <laughs> I, for real, man, I'm just tired blase, of all this losing, blase. losing, yeah, losing, losing. Right. No, of course not. Right. And isn't that the exact reason why we brought Ron Rivera here? Because right. the Jay Gruden culture sucked so bad. The exactly. Jay Gruden Bruce Allen culture was so terrible. It was just, no, man, we're going to throw in the down man, spider two wide banana. We give up, man. We're not going to be playing here no more, man. We're going to be playing for a draft pick, man. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, that Trey Quinn, man, let's let go of Jameson Crowder, man, and let's bring him in, man, have him as our <laughs> slot receiver. I'll it's, tell you what, man, stop. that front desk lady. <laughs> um, tell you what man all right Never but that, to end on that the, note, the guy could pre man the, right. guy, the guy could pre man i'll um, tell you what man let's bring us back to another question from familiar face um jesse uh who clarified last week i apologize brother i called you a female i apologize it's straight up a dude <laughs> but he has a great question uh he he says with cam's he says cam 20 kyle yeah i know cam, <laughs> cam sims has been stepping up as of late and my question last week was about steven sims go figure lol but do you think that we have our future three wide receivers on the team already with steven sims cam sims and terry mclaurin i'll stick with you reed um i don't i think that they still want to upgrade that position unless cam sims comes out and plays similar to how we did this past week obviously you can't expect over 100 yards each week but unless he comes out and really shows out again then i i Still think that they want to upgrade. I still also think that they want to see what they have in Antonio Antonio Gandy Golden. So maybe 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 they have uh, guys that can come step up, but I don't think so. I think that you need another established playmaker opposite Terry. Um, it's also been interesting. It'll be interesting to see how Steven Sims plays going forward. Uh, he kind of struggled earlier in the season before he went on IR with with just holding on to the football. It seemed like anytime he caught the ball, he juggled it. Mm. He just didn't look the same, but he's still a big play waiting to happen. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, they definitely could be our, our trio of the future, or we could have, or you could throw AGG in there. Um, but I 
am not quite sold on it yet. Yeah, I'm right yeah. there. I'm right there with you, brother. Uh, I, I'm, I don't. I'm not sold it's on the because I have the best takes. Brother. I will say, Cam Sims is kind of having a kind of a resurgence, reminiscent of what Steven Sims did last year at the end of the season. I definitely see Cam Sims having that kind of role. I, without a doubt, believe in Cam Sims. And remember, when Ron Vera in his presser yesterday was asked about this young team and why playing these games is so meaningful for these young players. The one person that he picked out of there, the one example he used was Cam Sims. I think they like Cam Sims a lot, and he's showing out. So I do believe that Cam Sims is the future. I'm just not sold on Steven Sims, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm 100% with you. I think that Cam Sims can kind of be that what they projected Kelvin Harmon to be, that kind of intermediate Mm -hmm kind of passing People game guy. People forget about him, too. Exactly. He, he, could be, he could be in the mix right. next year, honestly. Like, he's coming he back from ACL. Really well rookie year. Yeah, he's ahead of schedule from all things I've seen on Twitter. But, uh, yeah, I think they, they're looking at him as kind of like, again, that kind of all-around special teams guy. He's great in the running games. That's what he did at Alabama. And, like, you, he showed for the past couple of weeks he can be a big play receiver whenever he gets down the field because he's a big, tall guy. So I definitely think that uh, they're looking at him to be like kind of in that rotation for that opposite guy to Terry. But I do think that they will either in free agency or in this upcoming draft, hopefully in the draft, they're going to go after a top tier guy like a Jamar Chase or a Waddle from Alabama, one of those speedy deep threat guys. Because again, what is this league? It's a passing league right now. You need those speedy deep threat guys to get down the field. So. Yep, I'm right there with you. I believe I agree with you. Thank you again, Jesse, uh, for that question. It was phenomenal. Now, next one, Sergio Martin on Twitter uh, at, reached out and said, why not try to activate Steven Sims from the practice squad? Sergio doesn't believe Steven that. Steven Montez. What did I say, Steven? Sims. Sim, well, I mean, that was ridiculous. Yes, yeah, Steven Montez, <laughs> uh, the rookie undrafted uh, player. He doesn't believe that Alex Smith or Dwayne Haskins will be on the roster for this Washington football team next season. Can so his thought, pro- his, thought- Damn. The, his thought process is, why if we're going for the future, why wouldn't you call this guy up and have him start getting acclimated and start progressing in this system if these other two quarterbacks aren't going to be on the roster? What's your opinion on that, Hall? Uh, that's a great question, but my question back to him would be, is Steven Montez going to be on this roster next year? Because he's a practice squad player, you know what I'm saying? He's not on like, the roster right now. Exactly. He's not even on the active roster right now. I get what you're going as far as, like, see what the young guy has and bring him up, see if he can, like, fit in. Well, they see him in practice, like, all the time, and he's not really that guy. I love him in Colorado. He definitely fit the system that Colorado ran. But as far as NFL style, pro style, kind of the speed of the game, stuff like that, I don't think Steven Montez is there yet, nor will he be there next year as far as ready to play on the NFL roster. Practice squad, maybe, yeah, he's a great practice squad guy. I'm sure he's, like, a great uh, kind of, like, scout team guy where he can kind of play the the mobile quarterback that you're playing that week or give some guys some run in uh, practice. But as far as that, he's, like, a he's a third to fourth string guy at best. Hey, and look, uh, before you go, Reed, I will say this, Sergio, because I think Hall uh, did pretty well with explaining it. I will say that the practice squad quarterback and the third string quarterback are very, very similar. So I, there's not really much changing there. They're both not seeing many reps and they're just there for mental reps, essentially. What about you, Reed? Um, Yeah, basically what, what Hall said. And and I think that this coaching staff still wants to see what they have in Dwayne, just Mm -hmm. in case something has happened to Alex. uh, You got to see. And I just, could you imagine the uproar from this fan base? Most, a lot of people who still think that Dwayne shouldn't have been benched, who are yeah. still saying oh, that that was a huge mistake, and that think was about stupid. That. Could you imagine tw- Washington football Twitter, those people going off right now because they called up Steven Montez instead of Dwayne Haskins? <laughs> that would be the funniest Twitter meltdown I've ever seen in my life. Like yeah. that would be up there. Um, so probably I, like shut down Twitter, honestly. It would. It would be ridiculous because there's still people who think that Dwayne should be the starting quarterback. And, there's people I mean, that think some... that RG three should still be the starting <laughs> right. quarterback. Exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. So it, I think that it would it would just cause a shit storm. And I honestly I think that would be the only reason I would want to see it. it would be funny. <laughs> Could you imagine Dwayne getting demoted to practice squad dog? Like. 
Oh my god! At that point, just release him, man. At like, that geez. point, you better delete all your social medias. Yeah. Never post again. At that point, Robert Vera better not leave his house. It's gonna be like angry mob trying to cut my throat. <laughs> yeah, ass. right. Oh man. All right. Now to finish this up with the fan questions, Archangel underscore forty three has a draft question for us. Should the Washington football team look at Najee Harris and the, the running back from Alabama in the second round? He believes the team needs a bell cow kind of running back, and he doesn't see Barber or McKissick being on the roster next season. Reed, I'll start with you. Um, I think McKissick will end up being on, on the roster next season. I think he's proven now, to be the, too valuable the question in the passing is, game. The question is specific. In the second round, should they look at N- Najee Harris? I mean, it depends on how the draft shapes out, but I, I think that there's still they still want Antonio Gibson to end up being that bell cow guy. Remember, he's young. He's still learning the position. Uh, I think that we have way bigger needs right now than running back. But then again, last year at this time, if you were to tell me that we were to take Antonio Gibson when we had Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis, and well, I know I should not mention his name, but uh, I would have called you crazy. So you never know. Najee Harris is, is a very talented runner. Um but I don't think so. I think that they have some bigger needs on this roster that they need to address before they look at a running back. But if he's the best guy there and they think that they can create a two headed monster with him and Antonio Gibson, I'd be down for it. Yeah. Look, I will say, I believe that Antonio Gibson can be that bell cow back. He just needs to progress into it. And yeah. the coaching staff has said that multiple times. They believe that he is capable of that. But now Archangel, I will say, I don't believe that they should be looking at Najee Harris or running back in that second round. What I think that they should be doing is they should be drafting the quarterback and the left tackle of the future in rounds one and two. The left tackle position is very heavy in this draft. And there's one guy that I absolutely love who is not being, who's being projected until the second round. I would absolutely love for them getting the, the quarterback in the first, then getting the left tackle in the second round, who is an absolute steal. I Jackson would love Carmen. Is that what you're going to say? Yes. Wrong. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, no, but I'm right there with you. I think that you got to go quarterback and left tackle. Shit. I, I'm sorry. I think that you could even trade up, use your two thirds to trade up back into the first round if mm. you needed to, to, to make sure like that you that. get that left tackle. No, dude. I mean, Hey, if they, if there's somebody that's falling down the board, you know, that, that you think, but they've done so well in the third round picks, you know, I want to keep those two third round. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, what I, I meant, what, that was what, be my point. We've been what I meant, James in the third round what I meant year. guys was <laughs> using one of the third round picks and your second round pick to move up. Okay. Into the first, that way it's, you still have a third. Okay. So you can still find your third round gem, but I'm just saying what I'm just saying. And you guys are wrong. So there we go. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That was a great question. Uh, great questions from everybody. Thank you so much, Sergio Martin, Archangel underscore 43. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, and then, uh, Colonel, appreciate your questions. Now, guys, I want to kind of discuss the NFL in particular. Altogether, our reactions. Biggest surprise of the weekend, Hall. Man, uh, biggest surprise of the weekend. I will go. It's not really a surprise, but. I will say the Chiefs. I expected the Chiefs to be balling out. I expected them to be obviously like leading their division, one of the top teams in the AFC, Super Bowl contenders. I did not expect Pat Mahomes to be out here putting up MVP type numbers once again. Then the dude has like 27, 28 touchdowns, 25 touchdowns, somewhere around there. Just one interception, which is ridiculous. Uh, I think he's top, obviously, he's top five in QBR right now. They they, are they're not one. even running the ball. That, they're not even the running cra- the ball. That, exactly. That's the craziest yeah. thing. They each had like five rushes for seven yards last week. Le'Veon right? Bell barely even saw the field. Yeah. Like, so like, yeah, the Chiefs but, are uh, not really my biggest surprise, but like they're the most like just kind of like wow kind of thing going on right now. Because again, I expected them to be dominant, just not this dominant. Biggest surprise. I, this should be an easy one. That slopping given given to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. That was embarrassing. That was terrible. And then, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it was just every single person in the media took the Bucks to win that game. And the Saints were just like, you guys forget, we're a very good team. We've been together a very long time. So we're going to go out there and look at look at what they did. And now, like, like I heard on a Good Morning NFL or whatever, that this is – this is going to be the week coming up where you see what Tom Brady still has left because Tom Brady in the past, when he used to get his ass whooped one week, you know, he was going to be fired up coming out the next week. And that's what kind of sets off the Tom Brady. All right, I'm in a, I'm in the zone. I'm winning. Here we go. The league messed up. And uh, so we're going to see if that happens this week. If not, maybe he doesn't have enough left. And uh, also the Patriots and the Jets 
being into it neck and neck last <laughs> night. God, you never thought mm-hmm. I would say that. How about the Jets being up big in the fourth? I quarter? know. <laughs> With never like thought. Never thought. Minutes I would after say whatever that. it was, like yeah. <laughs> Cracky was uh, what was he drunk last night? Messaging our chat saying, uh, "Is Joe Flacco elite?" <laughs> <laughs> remember when that was Has a, he ever people, been elite like what do you mean no he hasn't remember when <laughs> ravens fans used to say that yeah, yeah. Is he elite? It's ridiculous no, that's not when you win a super bowl off of like a ridiculous crazy run yeah, yeah. and Jay uh, Flacco. biggest Jay surprise Flacco. biggest surprise of the weekend i guess i could say it's the biggest surprise it's, it's not even deshaun watson i think deserves to be in the running for mvp the yeah. dude is an absolute animal. So good. Like in the first pass of the game, he just throws an 80 yard touchdown. You know, it's just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. The dude is the only guy on his team. Now David Johnson's out with a concussion. You know, it's so much respect to Deshaun Watson and what he's doing uh, down there in Houston because he's playing incredibly well. But like, I was really going to say the Buccaneers again, just getting shellacked on primetime football. They have a convincing win and they have a demoralizing loss. Right. And I saw you saw all the quotes, all the memes, everybody saying Antonio Brown's already rubbing off on him. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I remember whenever Gavin brought that up. So he told you, told you. I was like, oh, what did Antonio Brown have to do with them putting up three points? Like, <laughs> what did Antonio Brown have to do with them not blocking the Saints defense at all? What yeah, did them have? Yeah. What did Antonio Brown have to do with like literally Tom Brady turning the ball over? Like, no, nah. I was like, Antonio right. Brown had nothing to do with that. Yeah. You're an idiot. One other right. big surprise of the weekend that I, it's not really of the weekend, but. Lamar Jackson is playing so poorly. Average to poor, right? They, they cannot throw the football. I mean, they are so struggling. Hayden Hurst seemed like to be the missing connection for that right. offense because they, they can't even get the ball to Mark Andrews. Uh, he very literally looks like a running back playing quarterback right yeah. now. Like, he's just not doing next to anything. He's averaging, what, like 170 passing yards a game? Yeah. yeah. And he's not rushing the ball. Now, all of a sudden, uh, Kyler Murray's become that rushing quarterback in the NFL. He's on pace for over a thousand yards and four thousand yards passing. It's just, it's weird, man. He's playing. I never terrible. thought I, I never thought I'd see a team that's worse than the within Washington at drafting wide receivers. But hey, Baltimore said, "Hold my beer." <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> there they are. It's, it's crazy, man. They're so bad. They signed Dez. Right, and he's like, right. can't even really get on the field like that. That's how right. bad it is. Like, and I'm pretty sure Dez is 48 now. <laughs> Now, my other surprise is honorable honorable mention is, and I hate to say this because. The Steelers. No, no, no. Even worse. The Raiders. Um, They're they're a surprise. They are. They they are. They beat the Chiefs, which was obviously surprising to everybody. But Derek Carr is having a, obviously, honestly, like a fringe MVP type year. I've never understood why people hated on him so much. I was literally, I was one of the people where I was like, if he's available next year, bring him on to Washington. I'll say, I'll be happy to have Derek Carr. People always were like, the Raiders, they're going to be looking at a quarterback this year in the draft. They're going to replace Carr. I'm like, Derek Carr's actually been pretty good. I mean, he's been yeah. solid. I understand. They're like, oh, they brought in Mariona. John Gruden loves Mariona. Yeah. He's going to run so many spider two wide bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Mariota's like, not nah, even going to get on the field. Yeah, we're not going to do that, man. I'm going to stick with Carr, man. No, but – and then also the, the Steelers-Cowboys game. That yeah. what, it was Pittsburgh. What I call doing? that because, look, I haven't started. I had too Steelers. much of a – right. I've had the Steelers on my bench, like defense, for like the past couple of weeks, just kind of just like slipping on. Just kind of like, and we I'm have, just like, oh, the... we have killed Mike for. I know, starting. and I, I said on Sports Talk, it's like, look, this is gonna be the one week where I start them, and guess what? They're gonna come out and, and <laughs> poop the bed. their whole team's gonna poop the bed. Blah blah blah. And what happened? They pooped the bed. They, did. they didn't give me double digit points that they have been against the Browns, against all these other like pretty good offensive teams, and you come out against Dallas, a horrible offensive team. And you come down to like the water, pretty much. What right. are y'all doing? Come on. And you know what? That that's exactly what happens when you take a team as a joke and don't really prepare for them. Mm-hmm. I think that's what happened. I thought that they just thought they were going to go in there and steamroll the Cowboys. Dallas prepared like they needed to win this game, despite having Garrett Gilbert starting at quarterback. And you saw it on the field, man. They almost pulled it off. Well, that would have been so. Do that. It would have yeah. been so funny though. They better not do that in Cincinnati because Joe Burrow will throw a thousand yards on them if they do that. One I other, know. one other surprise from the weekend, um, in my opinion. Look, I know you guys are gonna call me crazy. But Crazy. At the end of the season, the Washington football team are going to face off against the Seattle Seahawks. And the Buffalo Bills yeah. showed a blueprint on how to beat the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, Russell Wilson was throwing pick after pick. But you can see how you can beat the Seattle Seahawks. And I'm just going to say this Washington team seems like the Bills of last season. Of the quarterback being inept, but the defense keeping them in games. And then the running game being able to form, uh, formidable. So, look, I, I, that was the biggest surprise for me because I thought this was going to be kind of Russell Wilson proving 
that the NFC, the top of the NFC is better than whatever the AFC has to offer, that was not the case. Yeah, he's definitely slipped out the uh, MVP race. Uh, he was leading it for uh, pretty much the majority of this season. And these past couple of weeks, he's been throwing a lot of interceptions, a lot of turnovers. And meanwhile, Pat Mahomes is just slowly just doop, 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 just walking up the hill, just like, yeah, yeah, I'll get there when I get there. And by the end of the season, it looks like Pat Mahomes is going to steal that from him again. Yeah. Which I feel bad because this man, Russ, has never got an MVP vote. Right. I mean, like, he's a baller, but. So you kind of see that. what he does every year. He I starts hot and kind of tails off towards Remember, him. I said this last week on Thursday about the quarterback position. The the good quarterbacks make plays with whoever they have there. They're right. able to run the football well, use play action, get the ball downfield. The great quarterbacks, the superstars, do well throwing the football without the running game. That is what you're seeing out of Pat Mahomes. The dude yeah. is an absolute animal. Look, the Patriots had like one game here or there over the past 20 years where they would – just throw the ball the whole game, right? The Chiefs are doing this in multiple weeks back-to-back -back and still <laughs> kicking ass. It's yeah, absolutely yeah. insane how good they're playing. Now, to finish up the episode, fellas, uh, another question that got posed by Andy and the guys at DC Tweet Team that I wanted to pick your brain, and I think this is a good discussion to have. Is this team this season worse than the team of last season, Reed? No, I don't think so. I, I just think the mindset, the talent-wise, I mean – the defensive line is better than they were last year. But, I mean, really, other than that, I mean, they didn't make too many improvements, I, I guess, that, besides the Chase Young, which is a very, very big improvement. Um, and I know we've struggled with injuries and whatnot the, the previous years, but, no, this team is better than they were last year. They're going to prove that. They've already matched the win total from last year, and they're, they're going to continue. They'll win a few more games. They're not going to finish with the second pick. No matter how much people want them to, Ron Rivera won't let them. So just by coaching alone, no, they're not worse than they were last year. Yeah, look, yeah. this team last season lost to the Giants by 30 points. They got down early, and they didn't fight back. This is a completely different team. This team fought back and actually had a very good chance to win this game when they shouldn't have. I think that this is a, this is a way better team than last yeah. season. Last season, it was like they were just losing to lose games. But this season, when they lose, it's like they're using it to build upon. They know that they could have won the game, but they made a difference. Last season, when they got lost, it was just when they lost, it was because they got their ass beat. They just weren't the better team. They weren't a good team. This season, they're a good team. They're just letting the other team win. I think this is a different freaking team. I hate that argument. I, I think this is such a better off team than it was last year. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. What about you, Hall? Yeah, I mean, you guys literally both made – but like two of my points, my top two points, which was just based off the coaching staff and the front office alone, this is a better team. And just by removing Brees Allen, this is a better team. And number three point is, like you just said, by this team literally just coming out last year and just getting destroyed on both sides of the ball and special teams, just all around is looking like just hot garbage pretty much to a turnaround this year where like literally – most of these games that they're losing, they're beating themselves. So this it's like, you know what I'm saying? This defense right. is top five against the pass. Exactly. Right. They, they were getting bludgeoned last season. Yeah. Right. Look, as long as we can, if this defense can stop the run next year and turn that around, this will be the defense that we all thought it was going to be this year. Mm -hmm. It just took, obviously, we were all like a year too early. But with that being said, it's definitely a different team. It's definitely a better team from last year with all of those three points that we all just said. And like, like you just said, Kyle, the biggest point is, they were coming out and just trying to get the games over with last year. They were just like, come on, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the clock out, get off the field. Oh, man, it's 35 to 3. We got destroyed. This year, it's like, like like you said, they're just be they're beating themselves pretty much. Turnovers, stupid mistakes, penalties here and there. The young team doesn't know how to win yet. I think that next year, even this year, they're going to uh, win off a couple more wins. But I think next year is going to be the year where everyone says – Right. This is the team that they're supposed to be. And, and I think that the defense, too, is going to improve when they find the guy under center. Because yeah. when you have a, a, the offense is going to help the defense so much if the offense can stay consistent and, and play well. And that's all going to start with the quarterback. You saw it in the Giants game this past Sunday. Alex came in and he kind of solidified and had the offense kind of in moving and mm -hmm. going down the field in the second half. And the defense only let up three points in the second half. So yeah. it's a defense is all about – uh, what's it called? Cohesion. Cohesion. Offense got to help the defense. Defense got to help the special teams. Special teams got to help the offense. Yep, without a doubt. I'm right there with you, brother.
Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning into this episode. I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you to the Colonel, uh, Sergio Martin, Archangel underscore 43. And then Jesse, uh, thank you so much for your guys' questions. We really do appreciate it. And then I want to give a special shout out. Chris Bryant just found out his father, I believe, just got diagnosed with a form of cancer. Uh, so, Chris, obviously, with everything you do for the hog farmers, with all the kids with pediatric, uh, pediatric cancer and everything that you guys do, all of our prayers are with you. If there's anything we can do, please reach out. And if you guys can, send your condolences to Chris. You know, let him know that you're with him. Keep his strength with him. Because obviously, hearing that about your father is going to hurt some people. But, you know, we stick together, don't we? All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Hall. I'm Reed. And this episode of the Burgundy Zone was brought to you by Rode Microphones Pod Mic, dynamic podcasting microphone. Please make sure that you guys check it out anywhere <laughs> podcast microphones are sold. Go. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous all right everybody paid, son yes hey, hey, you gotta practice when we get paid son remember everybody go like and subscribe us on itunes you can like and subscribe us on youtube we're on spotify google pods you can find us on facebook on twitter i'm at the burgundy zone hall is at tbz money mike 301 and Shoot. then mike reed is mike reed 19, uh, 2156 at, at real donald trump there that's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get banned, brother. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll, count. we'll catch you guys on Thursday. We are going to be joined by special guest, a fellow podcaster of the Back Row Redskins podcast, Emmanuel Chaguba. My, our guys, Chalk Talk, baby. Let's get. We'll see him on Thursday. We'll catch you guys then. Washington football. Woo! Yes, sir. Oh, yeah,